Hi kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. And welcome back to the channel for another bike review. This is a bike that has been much requested on the channel. It's one that uh, I haven't ridden for about five years and it's in uh, my one of my favorite genres, the sport touring genre. Today I'm out on a brand new 2023 Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX. It's had a few changes since uh, I last rode her. Stick around, stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of it. So welcome back to the channel folks on, uh, I was going to say this lovely summer's day but I'm recording this in the middle of August and this is the summer that we're getting in Blighty this year. Absolutely horrible, I shall be lucky if it doesn't rain on me during the uh, period of this review. But anyway, I digress. The bike, the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX. When I last rode it, it was a 2018 model year. I really liked the bike actually. I was quite taken aback by its comfort and its four cylinder smoothness. Back then it was called the Z1000 SX. Uh, it's had some sort of evolutionary updates since then, but that was, as I say, five years ago. So actually they amount to quite a lot of changes on the bike. It looks a little bit different. Uh, it's got some upgraded electronics and overall they've made, I thought was a pretty good bike. I think even better, but we'll find out as we ride it. But before we get into the ride, let me show you what the bike looks like. Okay, let's take a look at the Ninja 1000 SX then. What's uh, what's changed with the bike? Well, the actual design of the front end has changed a little bit on the bike, and I think now it looks a little bit more handsome. Uh, previously, I described it as a bit sort of duck-faced. It's got a little bit of that maybe still, but a bit less. I think it's quite nice. I like what they've done with the graphics on this as well. When I first saw pictures of it, I thought this bit down here at the bottom, I thought that was some sort of radiator grill, but in fact, it's just graphics on it. This particular one in the red, uh, I think looks really, really nice. Uh, coming around the um, back end here is one of the bigger changes for the bike based again on the one that I rode previously back in I think it was about 2018 is now it's just got this single exhaust on the right hand side previously it had four exhausts uh, to either side uh, which I was in sort of two minds about whether it looked right and I think this probably looks better weirdly this isn't any lighter than that bike though uh, so I don't know what's happened to the fact that it's now got you know a lot less exhaustery on it but it doesn't seem any lighter which is very strange but yeah I think it's a handsome bike with these graphics now and in this red looks really really cool so uh yeah nice looking bit of kit let's get back on and ride us some more okay welcome back aboard the bike so much for the uh styling changes and so on they've made to it then does she ride all right well of course yes is the answer to that i'm going to uh come down some slightly more minor rows though just to see what she handles like on the uh, the terrible roads that we have here in the UK at the moment. They are potholed and hideous, but they're the sorts of roads you're likely to encounter if you go off on tour. So it's a realistic test. Also I noticed I've turned off into what looked like the darker clouds, so I could get wet here, but anyway. So around these really potholed and horrible roads, I have to say the suspension feels pretty darn good. It's fully adjustable on the front and slightly adjustable on the rear. We'll go through the full specs and I'll show you uh, those a little bit later but in terms of the way she feels given it's quite a big heavy bike it actually feels quite light I wouldn't say it's agile I mean it's not unwieldy in any way it's not like uh, you know it's not like riding a gold wing or something which I know well you can feel that it's a you know a fairly long bike and the geometry on it means that you do have to kind of counter steer to get it to turn but it's nothing too radical so it doesn't feel ponderous or heavy at all it's, it's really nice actually just that right balance you need for touring actually in terms of its comfort the seat on here it feels quite big uh, it's got more padding than the uh, bike I rode before but I have to say it feels quite hard uh, and also because of the shape of it you can't move around that much on it so I'm a medium-sized fella at five foot eight Ooh, and here comes the rain and it feels absolutely fine for me but I think if you were a taller person, you may find it a little bit tight. My legs are tucked up in a sporty position. I quite like that. And I am canted forward. It's not uh, in any way an uncomfortable cant forward. I mean, it just means you're, you've got a little bit of weight over the front wheel that helps, obviously, with the handling. And uh, if you are going away on tour to foreign climbs, you'll have great fun when you got to where you were going on this because it is a relatively sporty perch, if you like but not a hideous amount of weight on my wrist that uh, would make me put it in the uncomfortable category. 
She sounds really nice with this four-cylinder engine. Lovely and smooth, it's not obnoxiously loud. And because it is such a powerful engine, you just know it's got loads of go waiting to be unleashed. <laughs> right, talking about the powerful engine, let me take you through those specifications. Okay, quick whiz through the numbers then. First off, uh, the engine on this. It's that beautiful 1043cc liquid cooled four cylinder inline unit. Puts at 142 PS at 10,000 RPM and 111 Newton meters of torque at 8,000 RPM. So she needs winding up a little, but by goodness me, she's got plenty of poke. Brakes on the front, dual 300 mil discs with a four pot monoblock caliper. At the back, a single 250mm disc with a single pot caliper, weirdly mounted just at the bottom there so you can get all the crud in it. I don't know why manufacturers do that, very strange. Suspension at the front end provided by these 41mm upside down forks and these are fully adjustable. And the rear shock, as you can see, has a remote preload adjuster as well. Seat height on here, quite a tall 835mm, but me as a shorty, only 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch leg, I could pretty much flat foot it and it doesn't feel at all ponderous or heavy when you put your feet down. Talking of the weight, it's 235 kilograms curb weight this bike. Tank capacity on here, very reasonable 19 litres. We haven't talked much about the electronics on here, but it's got this lovely uh, TFT. It's got an IMU on it. It's got uh, traction control, of course, and ABS. Cruise control, phone connectivity, uh, quick shifter, power modes, and LED lighting all round. Price-wise, the Ninja 1000SX will cost you from £12,349. I think that is pretty good value for the amount of bike that you're getting. All right, welcome back aboard. So much for the numbers then, which are all pretty impressive, it has to be said. Some of the practical things about this mirror is a bit stalky out there, but I can see out the back fine because they are on those big stalks. It does mean that my elbows are well cleared, so I can see behind me. They do look a little bit convex, actually. They're weird. They don't look sort of optically perfect to me. There's a little bit of distortion on the edges. It's not, uh, you know, it's nothing to write home about, but it's uh, just unusual. It's not something I've seen before. See, there's been a shower here because it's quite wet on the road so I'm just taking it a little bit easier through here. I don't actually know this area at all well so I could get lost. Man, these roads are in a terrible state around here. In terms of what you're looking at, the dash, it's all quite neat and tidy down here. This little screen seems to do a reasonable job actually. I've got uh, smooth airflow over my head I can feel so that's nice. There's nothing turbulent there so that's going to work well if you're doing longer transits on motorways and faster roads. The screen is adjustable manually. This is on its mid setting at the moment, which seems fine for me. Ha! Let's go, uh, which way should we go? Let's go this way. And something that's new for the bike over the older one that I rode is this new TFT, which looks lovely and clear. You've got a little button here, if you just press it, you can set it to sort of the opposite mode, you see, that's like a black on white. I actually prefer the white on black. Yes, yeah, a nice clear representation. It's got everything you need on there, including a proper fuel gauge, which I like, and uh, everything you would expect there as well. That you can flick through using these select buttons here. If you hold them, uh, that's how you change riding mode on the bike. If you just touch them, that's how you change the various settings at the bottom. So that's all quite straightforward and easy to use. The buttons feel nice and good quality. You can get at them easily with your gloves. I like the controls on this. It, it works well with so many bikes it's got this little piss bottle brake reservoir which I really don't like but lots of bikes have that. The quick shifter on here actually works really really nicely. Quick shifters seem to suit four cylinder bikes I think. I've ridden obviously a number of bikes with lots of different quick shifters and sometimes on the twins they're absolutely horrible but on here really nice both down and up lovely and smooth. Uh, let's go this way I'm in real danger of getting horribly lost. Yeah you could really feel that 140-ish brake horsepower, loads of poke there. Really really nice and it sounds awesome, super smooth. Now as I say it has got a really nice quick shifter on here if you do want to use the clutch, as occasionally you do when you slow down or what have you, it has got a slip and assist clutch on here, so it's lovely and light. And if you're hand fisted with it, it means you don't get a nasty surprise if you come off the clutch quickly. All right, just on a faster A road now, just to see how the bike is on the slightly quicker roads. I don't want to go too nuts, but uh, 
it's one of these bikes that kind of encourages you to ride fast but it is it's lovely yeah in the corners it's one of those bikes that is kind of like i call it set and forget you know you don't when i say you have to muscle it around you don't have to muscle it around you just have to give it a little bit of counter steering to get it into the corner and then it just stays there and tracks really true partly helped i think by the geometry of the bike partly helped by the weight of the bike maybe even a bit of aerodynamics i don't know but it's uh, it's really nice and stable going around these long sweepers this uh, gearbox is lovely actually let me just get into these nationals again the third and here we go flies if you wanted to yeah very very nice indeed just try the brakes on here wow those front stoppers work really really well not grabby at all as well nice uh, nice and predictable there you can have a lot of faith that this is going to stop you let me just try the rear brake yeah, ABS cuts in quite quickly on the rear but I guess that's what it's there for but yeah that front brake actually is really nice yeah, and not a lot loads of fork dive either, which is uh, something I like. I hate it when you hit the brakes and the front just dives away, but that's uh, not a problem on here. So this bike comes in various uh, guises. There's a performance version, there's a uh, tour version, or well, I think a performance tour version. Check out the Kawasaki website for all the details. But uh, you know, you get a separate set of accessories with those different versions, obviously, luggage and stuff but this particular bike I'm riding is the standard bike beautiful handling through here actually so smooth this engine it's lovely I'm not sure how good it would be with somebody on the back I'm not sure how comfortable it would be for a pillion Let's just slow down again as we're coming to 30 Because as I say, the seat, even though it uh, looks quite thick, it is quite hard. I'm not sure how long you'd want to be a passenger on the back of this. It is more, I would say, at the performance end of sort of sport touring, rather than the comfort end. Let's go this way. What a cracking views up here. I must come this way more often. Lovely. If you're wondering where I am, I am... I think I'm still in Buckinghamshire. I'm in the environs of Aylesbury. I've borrowed this bike actually while my Kawasaki is in for a service on your bike. And uh, the Kawasaki sales guy, Tony, very nice guy if you know him. <laughs> he very kindly let me borrow this bike while mine's in for a service, so while I wait. So I thought it was a great opportunity to go out and get reacquainted with the bike. I have to say, I'm really glad I have. So thus far, there's nothing really about it that I don't like, other than some daft things that are very... Um, sort of subjective so I mentioned these mirrors I mean they work all right other than that weird distortion at the edges but I'm not too keen on the design of the stalks minor minor thing and it wouldn't put me off buying the bike given you know there's so many good things about it uh, but the wind protection on it is lovely it's got this big frontal area and my you know my lower half of my body is not in any breeze at all as I say this screen seems to work really well comfort wise yeah, it's, it seems all there. The riding position is really nice. So the things that are important, to me at least, on a bike, things like how it rides, how it looks, <laughs> not necessarily in that order either, sadly, how shallow am I? On this bike, always let me buy, thank you very much. Thank you. Here we go. Ah, oh, superb on this bike. The important things that matter, they've got absolutely right. It's very confident firing with the way this goes and stops I have to say it sticks to the road really nicely that suspension does a good job and as I say the brakes are formidable and you need to bring her up to a halt quickly comes in two colors for uh, this model year which is the usual Kawasaki green and black which I'm not that keen on that Kawasaki green actually but this red version I do like very much I'm not sure about the matte paint though how that would stand up but it certainly looks nice when it's brand new like this one is so how would I sum up then on this bike what sort of rider is this for well I think it's for the sort of person that 
enjoys their motorcycles on the sportier side and enjoys riding, going touring, probably on their own. I'm not saying you couldn't ride with a passenger on it, you certainly could, and you could carry plenty of stuff in the panniers, but really it's, it's got naughtiness written all over it. It's, it's a lot of fun to be had on this bike when you get to your destination. Oh, I thought I'd really slow down there, let's get slow down a bit more. Actually, that's, that's a good chance to actually ride it really slowly. Let's go down into first gear, look, there's nothing around that I'm annoying. Here we go, ride it at sort of snail's pace. Fueling on it, seems nice, slow, look at that, there's no hunting around, it's not jerky or anything like that. Really good. Okay, let's up the gears a bit and see what she's like if I abuse the gearbox. There we are, look, fifth. Let's try fifth at 30 miles an hour, see what it thinks of that. Look at that, 26 miles an hour in fifth and it's as smooth as you like. That is a very tractable engine, I have to say. Lovely. Yeah, so on this first impressions review, uh, you know, as I say, I haven't ridden one of these for five years, so it's a long time since I had, had a go on one, so it really is like I'm, I'm hitting the bike fresh again. There is nothing not to like about this bike. I think it's excellent value. It rides really, really nicely. I think it looks really good now as well. If you, like me, like sport tourers to be sort of sporty, definitely, definitely get yourself a test ride on one of these. It's proper old school sport touring, this. And that's... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. So I must just say a huge thank you to uh, Tony from On Your Bike for uh, letting me borrow their demo bike. If you want to have a go on this very machine, pop down to uh, On Your Bike just outside of Aylesbury. Check it out on uh, Google Maps, you'll find it. It's quite some nice roads around here for riding as well. It's quite a good place just to go and have a ride out. And uh, yeah, set yourself up with a test ride on this very bike. It's a, it's a nice thing. And I must say, of course, thank you to you for watching the video. If it's the first time you've been along to the Bissenden Fly, I don't just do bike reviews here on the channel, but I do uh, trips and tours at home and abroad, bits and pieces about looking after your bike, I do monthly bike news. Basically, you name it, I try and cover it on the Bissenden Fly. It'd be great to have you along on the next one. So do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. All right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Bissenden Fly. Cheerio.